Alright, so this video has been postponed a little bit, mainly due to the fight being postponed, but here we go. So, Stamp Kiatniwat defended successfully his WBA interim world championship against, uh, flyweight championship against Gregorio Lebron for the, their rematch, which took place on Wednesday when it was originally supposed to take place last Friday. Now, the reason it was postponed was because one of the main sponsors uh, of the fight, you know, one of the main sponsors television-wise and just, you know, fight-wise as a whole, pulled out at the last minute. So even though these guys had already weighed in, they both made weight fine, 112, and were ready to go, um, the last-minute pullout from the sponsor made it so that they had to postpone the fight until they got another sponsor together for it, and um, they wound up happening f uh, four and a half days later, basically. So, four days later, uh, Wednesday as opposed to Friday, uh, they actually re-weighed in the same day. The WBA allowed them bo both to weigh a maximum of 117 for the same day weigh-in for the fight. They both made that weight handily, and they got it on a few hours later. So, uh, Stamp Kiatniwat managed to successfully defend his WBA interim um, shit, you know what, is it the interim, or is it, yeah, it was the interim, <laughs> see, that's the thing with the WBA, man, the interim, the regular, and the super titles, they get you all confused, so he successfully defended his interim WBA championship against Gregorio Lebron, their first fight, uh, a year and a half ago, had been a very controversial decision win for Kiat Niwat, actually, it wasn't a year and a half ago, it was, um, just, a, it was just a few months ago, uh, back in, I want to say August or September, but it was a controversial decision win for Kiatniwat. I thought LeBron won personally. I had him winning once, uh, 115 to 113, seven rounds to five. In this rematch, I actually had it a draw, six rounds to six. Um, one of the judges had it even, and the other two had Kiatniwat by a point and two points respectively here. Um, it was a very good fight. Uh, Kiatniwat started fast, just like he had in the first fight, and within a minute, Unfortunately, there was a head clash, and uh, it was kind of funny because it was a head clash followed by a big right hand from Kiatniwat that landed in the same spot where the head clash had landed, which opened up a nasty little cut right above the left eyelid of Gregorio Lebron. And one, if you've ever seen those cuts before, and you'll see it in the video, since I'll link it in the description box, uh, you'll see that it's in just in the one of the worst popular, possible positions. You know, it's it, so right on that, just on the. On the inner outside of the left eyelid, and it's it'll bleed right into the eye, basically. So, yeah, um, LeBron was fighting most of this fight, you know, s you know, semi one-eyed essentially. Although the bleeding wasn't, uh, it wasn't constant. It would be kind of intermittent whenever uh, Kianemwa was able to land a good shot on him. But he cut him early. He got off to a good start. One of the first couple of rounds, LeBron started to get his. Uh, bearings on himself um from the third into the fourth round you know the blood wasn't ba bothering him as badly he started sticking and moving a little bit better and by that time Kianiwat had started slowing down he had started out with a really good high guard and he was catching and countering LeBron's jab and using LeBron's jab against him but by the fourth round his hand started to drop a little bit he wasn't catching that jab anymore LeBron started to work out with the jab a little bit throwing a little bit of side to side movement and, and a little bit more of foot foot movement to uh, keep Kiatniwat following him around. And he actually landed some good shots that led him to winning a couple of those rounds, leading into, I believe it was the 5th or the 6th, where Kiatniwat landed a hard, hard body shot to LeBron and kind of buckled him for about a half a minute and, and rallied up a hell of a nice uh, follow-up and combos with that. And then he wound up walking into a nasty body shot from LeBron LeBron followed up even better than Kiatniwat had, and he was hammering him by the end of the round. That round ended really well, and it was just a, an excellent back-and-forth fight from the 6th into the 7th round on th all the way through the 12th. Um, they, they traded rounds. It was a lot more um, competitive round-by-round round than their first fight was. Their first fight was a competitive round-by-round round fight, but Kiatniwat clearly kind of controlled the first and the back half of uh, the first um, couple of rounds and the last couple of rounds, whereas LeBron had pretty much dominated the entire center uh, from like round three to round nine in the first fight. But with this fight, every round was nip and tuck. It was very closely contested. Both of them were switching up styles, you know, switching up what they were doing. When LeBron was able to get the jab off and control the distance and the timing, he did the, he, he did the best. And when Kiatniwa was able to close the distance 
and uh, basically stay on top of LeBron and mix up right hands to the body and right hands to the head, he was doing extremely well and tucking his chin so that uh, some of LeBron's punches were flying completely over him. So, Kianawat managed to um, to de- successfully defend the title he initially won against LeBron. And uh, I think both of these guys have a good future ahead of them. I mean, LeBron it should really fit right back into the picture against any of these other opponents. Perhaps on that run wrong, if they want to bring him back to Thailand, that would be an excellent, excellent fight. I think he would be a very, very tough tactical style matchup for Ruin Rong, who hasn't really necessarily fought the greatest of boxers. He mainly fought guys that are big power punchers and and, um, and or explosive speed type fighters, and he's been able to kind of uh, negate that and take the fight out of the fight, kind of like the way Hopkins does. With uh, LeBron, he won't be able to do that. He'll have to jab with him. He'll have to you know, be real technical with him. And LeBron, I think, has the slickness to make everything really tough for Ron Wong. I'm not sure if he necessarily has the physical strength, though, to deal with Ron Wong's fouling and his body slams and crazy shit that he likes to do though for Kandewat I mean I think uh, it's looking really up for him if the WBA plans on completely instituting their whole unification process across all the divisions they have three champions at what WBA uh, flyweight rankings they have Juan Francisco Estrada as the super champion Kazuto Yoka as the regular champion and Snap Kandewat as the interim champion if they were to have Kandewat Fight either Estrada or Yoka, that'll be a big purse for Keanu Watt. Probably his biggest payday. I mean, it, it should be his biggest payday, really, against either of them. Yoka's probably going to get him paid better than Estrada because Yoka's still the number one draw in Japan. He brings insane amounts of money there. He's the one that I've been talking about. They should have him fight Zolshiming because, I mean, they could probably both clear seven figures easy in a fight against each other. But Keanu Watt versus Yoka would be a very good fight. Um, I think. I would probably favor both Yoka and Estrada over Kianawat at the moment just because of uh, the experience level. Kianawat is still a little bit of a, a little bit of a green type fighter. He's really good though. I think he's physically stronger than Yoka. He could probably bully him. With Estrada though, I think you have to have just optimal elite pound for pound level skills to be able to to deal with a guy like Estrada though. I mean, he's able to piece you up, and take you apart and he's not even necessarily a power puncher like that. But, I mean, he beats these guys up when he gets in there with him just because he's landing such sharp combos on him. Any mistake you make, Estrada's bound to punish it and, and then some. Bound to punish it like threefold. So, Keanu Watt did really well um, against Yoko or Estrada. He, he'll definitely get paid. I don't know if they might have him fight Yoko and then have the room to fight Estrada. I think that'd be an excellent path for the for the WBA to take. Um but Keanu Watt and LeBron both definitely fit into the, the top 10, if not the top 5, each of them at flyweight right now. Flyweight's kind of thinned out lately because of Gonzalez, Estrada, and Ron Rong's like, overall clearing out of a lot of the, their top contenders. Um, 108 and 115 are looking a little bit deeper at the moment now that some guys have moved around, moved, in, moved up and down in weight. Um, but the flyweight picture is still going to be there. Um, Gonzalez is still looking for an opponent coming up here. If Inoue and Estrada wound up wind up getting put up on HBO, they're going to need some opponents. And perhaps both of these guys can fit right into the picture. And I'd love to see both of them fight again. And I definitely will. And when their next each of their next fights, if I manage to get video of it, I'll post it up, post my review, post my thoughts. And then I'll get them from you guys too. So I'll hit you back on the next one.